presente. Дорогие преданные, пожалуйста, отключайте сразу микрофоны, чтобы да, дать возможность всем слышать то, что говорит We can start. Yeah. So. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Okay, so this morning we're going to we're going to begin studying the nectar of instruction. Right? Can, can, so you have the book Tadyana. 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 Can you hear me? Yes, I. You have the book Nectar of Instruction. Yes, I. So read the pre. Read the preface. Шри Читани Махапрабху принял образ мыслей и чувств Шри Матери Радхарани, 
лучшее из Бога. Таким образом, чтобы постичь миссию Господа Шичитани Махапрабу и идти по его стопам, необходимо со всей серьезностью следовать по стопам шести Госвами. Ширупы, Санатаны, Баты Рагунахи, Шиджилы, Гапалы Баты и Даса Рагунахи. Ширупа Госвами, возглавлявший Госвами из Бриндавана, написал эту книгу по дешамре нектар наставлений, как руководство в нашей деятельности. Как Ши Чайтани Махапрабху оставил после себя восемь стихов, называемых Шикшаштакой, так Рупа Госвами дал нам Упадишамри. Они сделали это для того, чтобы мы могли стать чистыми вайшнавами. В любой духовной практике главное место отводится контролю ума и чувств. Не контролируя ум и чувства, невозможно совершить, совершенствоваться в духовной жизни. Каждый живущий в материальном мире находится под влиянием гун страсти и невежества. Следуя наставлениям Рупа Госвами, мы можем подняться на уровень благости Сатва Гуны, и тогда перед нами откроется путь к дальнейшему совершенству. Прогресс в сознании Кришны в значительной степени зависит от позиции преданного. Последователь движения сознания Кришны должен стать совершенным Госвами. Вайшнавов принято называть Госвами. Во Вриндаване этот титул носят все, кто состоит во главе храма. Тот, кто хочет стать совершенным преданным Кришне, должен стать Госвами. Го означает чувство, а с вами хозяин. Не научившись управлять своими чувствами и умом, нельзя стать Госвами. Чтобы достичь наивысшего совершенства в жизни, стать Госвами, а затем чистым преданным Господом, нужно следовать наставлениям Упадишамры, который оставил нам Шрила Рупа Госвами. Шрила Рупа Госвами написал и много других книг, таких как Бхактира Самрита Ситху, Медакха Мадова и Лалита Мадова. Однако в Упади Шамрит вошли самые первые наставления, адресованные преданным неофитам. Мы должны неукоснительно выполнять эти указания, и тогда нам будет намного легче достичь желаемого успеха. Хари Кришна. Окей. Ома гьяна тимирандасья гьянанджана шалакая. Чаксурн Милитаньяна Тазмай Шри Гуравейна Маха Шри Чайтанья Манобистам Стапитам Яна Бутали Свайам Рупа Кадамаям Дадати Свападантикам Ванчакау Патарубьясча Крипа Синду Вача Патитанам Павани Бьо Вайшна Вебьо Намо Намаха Джай Шри Кришна Чайтанья Прабу Нитянанда Шри Адвайта Гадата Шри Васа Ригор Бхакта Винда Харе Кришна Харе Кришна 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 Харе 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 Рама Харе Рама 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 Харе Харе So we want to look at uh, I want just want to take some time this morning to look at the position of Rupa Goswami in relation to our Krishna consciousness movement. Итак, сегодня мы прочитали о том, как Шила Пугасвами связан с нашим движением сознанием Кришны. I offered the prayer this morning to Rupa Goswami. The meaning of the prayer is when will Srila Rupa Goswami, who is established within this world, the mission to fulfill the desire of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, give me shelter at his lotus feet. So Srila Rupa Goswami is the direct disciple of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed him to write books on the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. So this book Upadesh Amrita was written by Srila Rupa Goswami inspired by the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Итак, 
it is described that on one occasion Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was with the in the association of his intimate followers like Swarup Damodar Goswami and Ramananda Rai. Ramananda Rai. So Lord Chaitanya was always in the mood of Vrindavan and he would look at the sea at Jagannath Puri and he would think it's the river Yamuna. And there are sand, some sand hills surrounding Jagannath Puri and Lord Chaitanya would think that they are Govarda. There's also some beautiful gardens there at the along the uh, area around the, the temples in Jagannath Puri and Lord Chaitanya would think that this is Vrindavan. So in this feeling in the mood of Vrindavan, he would feel separation from Lord Krishna. And in his ecstasy of Krishna consciousness, he spoke some of these instructions. He took these instructions and on the basis of the instructions of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he compiled this book, The Nectar of Instruction or Upadesh Amrita. The, the, these teachings which are given in Upadesh Amrita, they are expanded in the other book of Rupa Goswami called The Nectar of Devotion. So when Srila Prabhupada first uh, wrote this, his comment on this book, when, the, when the, the, the editors, when the managers of BBT saw the book, they thought that this is a very high level philosophy, that we won't need to print many copies of this book because it's, they thought it's very high, very, philosophy level is very high. So, the devotees were thinking that we will just publish enough for the members of the society, for those who are active in Krishna consciousness. But when Srila Prabhupada heard this, he said, no, he said, this book is for mass distribution. And he ordered that they should print many copies and distribute the book to everyone. And Srila Prabhupada, you can see in the preface which we read this morning, Srila Prabhupada says that these instructions are, the, are for neophyte devotees. That means people beginning Krishna consciousness. 
мы прочитали сегодня, Шила Прабхупада пишет, что эта книга предназначена для неофитов, для начинающих преданных. And if we are going to practice Krishna consciousness, we have to come to the mode of goodness. We have to come up to the higher level. We have to control the mind and the senses in order to bring ourselves up to the mode of goodness. Мы должны подняться, мы должны контролировать свой ум и свои чувства для того, чтобы подня... суметь подняться в благости. So Srila Rupa Goswami was, of course, we said he is one of the intimate associates of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He was initiated by Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya gave him the name Rupa and Lord Chaitanya sent him to Vrindavan. For some time Rupa Goswami stayed in Jagannath Puri and he had association with Lord Chaitanya there. Swami, when he had left home, he came and he first met Lord Chaitanya at the Prayag, where the Ganga River, where the Ganges River meets the Yamuna River at Prayag, and there's one temple there of Bindu Madhava. So Lord Chaitanya met Rupa Goswami there. Before he left home. After, after leaving. Lord Chaitanya gave instructed Rupa Goswami for ten days there. And then he sent Rupa Goswami to Vrindavan. And after some time Rupa Goswami came to visit Lord Chaitanya in Jagannath Puri. And Lord Chaitanya also visited Rupa Goswami when he was in Vrindavan. Lord Chaitanya personally came there to Vrindavan. So Rupa Goswami, in in the spiritual world, he is his his spiritual position is as a Manjari, and his name in the spiritual world is Rupa Manjari. And Manjaris, they have the duty to assist in all the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. Manjaris are young gopis, they are very young girls, younger, the gopis are a bit more old, a bit older. Um, the advantage is being young girls, they're not envious when they see Radha and Krishna together. They're not envious, but they take pleasure in seeing Radha and Krishna together. So Rupa Goswami teaches us how we can enter into Krishna consciousness. In the, the beginning of Krishna consciousness, 
is to give up all the things which are not connected to Krishna, which are not Krishna conscious. Yes. И самое начало сознания Кришны заключается в том, чтобы отбросить вещи, которые не благоприятны для него. When we there there are six qualities described which are in relation to surrender to Krishna. И описывается шесть качеств, которые связаны с преданием Кришне. And the first the first one is to give up everything not in relation to Krishna. И первое заключается в том, что отбросить все, что не связано, что не связано с Кришной. Which are, we should give up all those activities which have no connection to devotional service. And then the next thing is we should take up all the activities of devotional service, accept everything favorable for devotional service. So we will see here in this book, Upadesha Amrita, Rupa Goswami begins describing the things which we have to remove, which we have to get rid of before we can take up devotional service. Now, Srila Prabhupada, when he was living in Vrindavan, he was staying at the Radha Damodar temple. And at the back of the Radha, da Radha Damodar temple, there are two some, there are two tombs there. One tomb is the Samadhi of Rupa Goswami and the other tomb is where he used to sit and write his books. So it's very significant that Srila Prabhupada chose to live there in Radha Damodar temple where he was very close to Rupa Goswami's uh, Bhajan Kutir and his Samadhi. And Srila Prabhupada sometimes told how Rupa Goswami had told him that he should go and preach and he should write these books. And if you look at the pranam mantras of some of our great acharyas, in our line of Gaudiya Vaishnavism, we see that they are also described as being followers of Rupa Goswami. All of the members of the Krishna Consciousness Movement are expected to be Follow of Rupa Goswami. So it's very important for us to know what are the instructions of Rupa Goswami. And these instructions of Rupa Goswami are not different from the instructions given by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Rupa Goswami took the instructions of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he put them into this book, Upadesha Amrita. Right. 
Lord Chaitanya personally spoke the Shikshastikam, which are eight verses, and Rupa Goswami, he wrote this book, which there are eleven verses. So, it's very important for us to know the content of this book. This, there are some of the great Vaishnavas have commented on this book. Before Srila Prabhupada, first of all, there was a commentary done by one of the uh, Goswamis from the Radha Damodar Temple. Radha Damodar Temple was established by Gopal Bhatta Goswami and the followers of Gopal Bhatta Goswami, they continue the worship of the deity there. And the people who worship that deity the family members, they're called Goswami. Their family name is Goswami. <laughs> they're not actually sannyasis in the sense of uh, initiating renunciate. Uh, they're not uh, uh, initiated as renunciates, but their family name is Goswami. <laughs> And they are dedicated to, they dedicate their life to worship the deity of Radha Raman, which is the deity established by Gopal Bhatta Goswami. Haribo? Haribo? So one of the members of the family, he wrote, he was a, a very learned scholar in, this, in the Gaudiya Vaishnava teachings and he wrote a commentary on this book, Upadesha Amrita. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur also wrote a commentary on this book. And Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada, he also wrote commentary on this book. And then Srila Prabhupada, our own founder Acharya, he also has given now his commentary on this book. So the book is very important among the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Right. So Srila Prabhupada says, this, is, this book is, uh, will help us if we follow these instructions which are given here in this Upadesha Amrita, then it will make our will very easily advance in Krishna consciousness. Okay, so we're going to read the first verse. I will chant the Sanskrit. Vajo vegam manasakro da vegam. Vajo vegam manasakro da vegam. Jiva vegam udaropasta vegam. Vipanya vegam 
איתן וגם יוב שהית דירה. סרבם מפימם פריטיבים ששישיית. אוקיי, read the word meaning, תדיאנה. So I want to point out, furthermore, I want to point out something because some people may hear this and they may say, "Oh well, I, I, this is not for me because I, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not going to make disciples." Don't misunderstand this statement. Anyone actually serious about Krishna consciousness, if you really want to, if we're going to practice Krishna consciousness, then we, we first of all have to get rid of these different things. We have to conquer over these different urges. Right, they're just kind of vegas, the different vegas, the urge, first of all, the urge to speak. Then the minds, the demands of the mind. Then the the action of anger, right? this anger, this is a big issue, people sometimes display so much passion, they're very angry. Sometimes we meet people, ang ang an angry young man, 
or the angry young woman. Other people may refer to them like that. And then the three other urges, the tongue, the belly, and the genital. So, Prabhupada, we read in the preface, Prabhupada was speaking that it's very important for us to control the mind and senses. We have to control the mind and senses because if we don't control the mind and senses, then we will simply be influenced by passion and ignorance. If we are going to practice Krishna consciousness, we have to come to the mode of goodness. It's, we cannot just make a show of devotional service. In the preface we read, Prabhupada was saying everything depends on the attitude of the devotee. So the attitude should be that we want to do everything which is favorable pleasing to Krishna. So the very first things are these giving up these things which have been described here in this first verse. Okay, so we can begin reading Prabhupada's purport. Uh, it's 10 pages, so until, until the end? No, just read one paragraph. Okay, so Srila Prabhupada is beginning this purport, he's talking about atonement, about how we can, how people, well he's describing Maharaj Parikshit questioning Sukadeva Goswami about what is the purpose of atonement, why should a person atone if he's not going to change, if he's not going to give up his bad habits. 
И комментарий с Вашила Прабхупада начинает с описания вопроса, который Махараджа Парикшин задал Шукадева Госвами. И вопрос звучал в том, что какой смысл людям искупать грехи, если они не собираются отказываться от греховной деятельности. So Prabhupada gives an example about how people are punished in the court. They, someone steals and have to go to court and he may be sent to jail. So being put into the prison, being put into the jail is a type of atonement, it's like a punishment. And it's hoped that after someone's in jail, they won't go back to jail, they won't steal again. But often it's not like that. We often see people steal one time, they steal again, and they steal and they go back to jail again repeatedly. Some people are more intelligent. They hear in the beginning that it's wrong to steal and they don't steal. Some people not so quite intelligent. They hear it's wrong to steal. They're, but they're, they still steal, they think, well, I'll steal, I won't get caught, but they get caught and they're punished, so they don't steal again. But you've got other people who are very foolish, they never learn, they keep doing bad things. So Maharaj Parikshit is questioning to Sukadeva Goswami, what's the point of people trying to do atonement if they're not going to give up their bad habits? So, go, go ahead now, read that next paragraph. So, P Parikshit Maharaj describes that that kind, doing atonement, trying to make up for our sins, it's, it, it's like, he compares it to the bathing of an elephant. Uh, 
искупление грехов, сравнивает такое искупление грехов с купанием слона. And we see that we see this kind of atonement is very common. Prophet gives an example how in Christianity people will often go to church and they confess their sin. But it's also there within the Hindu society. You see the people come to a holy place. And they will bathe in the holy water. They will bathe, for example, in the holy river, the Ganga. And, and they will pray that they can be relieved, get rid of some of their sinful reactions. But then after bathing in the holy water, then they go back and they continue their sinful life. They don't change. So why does Srila Prabhupada begin the purport in this way? Because the, the verse is about all the bad habits, all the, the bad things which we do. Right? Our because of our uncontrolled senses, we say things, we speak nasty things and we often speak insulting words to others. We speak bad language, we use very, very uh, foul language, to, we're very expert in giving pain and insulting others by our words. And then our mind is always full of so many evil thoughts. And we often and we're often overwhelmed by anger. So in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna has described three gates to hell. In chapter 16, Lord Krishna said, there are three gates to hell, there, there are lust, anger and greed. And every same person, every same person should avoid these three things. But they lead to the degradation of the soul. They degrade our spiritual condition. So, because of lust, we eat too much, we don't control our tongue. And we put more weight on the belly, fill our belly. And then we increase the sexual demands of the body. So in this way we perform many sinful activities. So we want to be free. Naturally somebody, an intelligent person knows he did some sinful activities, he will want to get free of the reactions from these sins. And the 
So sometimes people will do different, there are different methods by which people will do an atonement. For example, some people make, make a vow to practice silence for a day or for a week or for even a longer time. Someone may take a vow of silence, they won't speak, they won't say anything for a, a, for a day or for even a week or even longer. This is an atonement. Someone, other person may perform the atonement by fasting. They will give up eating for some time. Or somebody may perform an atonement by uh, by practicing celibacy, brahmacharya. But none of these methods will really help us to remove the desire for sin. We have to come to Krishna consciousness. We have to come to the actual platform of real knowledge. Haribo? We have to come to the platform of real knowledge. Okay, Can, maybe we'll take some questions from here. Yes, how to deal with the problem of the mind, because the mind wants, yes. all, the mind is never satisfied. So uh, at, at this particular time, at this particular time where people are confined to their home, 
they're not able to uh, feel very peaceful, they feel agitated within the mind. So we have to understand the nature of the mind, that, that the nature of the mind is, is restless and difficult to control. Just like in Bhagavad Gita in chapter 6, Lord Krishna was describing about meditation to Arjuna and Arjuna said he couldn't do it because his mind was so restless. But Lord Krishna replied to Arjuna, say, telling him, yeah, I, I know it's difficult, Arjuna, I know it's difficult, but it is possible by constant practice and detachment. In the sixth chapter, it's mentioned there these two things: Abhyasena tu konteya vairagena chagriyate. Abhyas means practice. It, nothing is, you know, it's not so easy in the beginning. But if we keep practicing, if we're determined, then we can do it. Just like using computer, uh, you have to practice, you have to practice typing, or you drive a car, you have to practice driving, it takes some practice. So similarly, controlling the mind will take some practice. And you must, we must also detach ourselves, we must be willing to let go, to give up that strong desire for material sense gratification. So that it's, we have to develop that attraction for Krishna consciousness which is concerned with hearing and chanting. So we have so many things to do as devotees. We have many rounds to chant. We have many books to read. We have many slokas we need to learn from the scriptures. So at this particular time, it's a blessing for devotees because it gives us more opportunity to increase our chanting and our study of the scriptures. So what seems difficult in the beginning becomes nectar as it continues. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes happiness in the modes of nature, happiness in goodness, in passion and in Happiness in ignorance is simply suffering from beginning to end.
Är det bra? Är det bra? Hare Krishna? Yes, Hare Krishna. Okay, we lost the connection. Everybody back? Yes. Okay, so I was describing happiness in the modes, happiness and passion. In the beginning it's like nectar, but quickly it becomes painful and miserable and suffering. And happiness in the mode of goodness, in the beginning it's painful, it's difficult, but gradually, gradually it becomes nectar. And so we have to be willing to accept a little difficulty in the beginning. So controlling the mind is difficult in the beginning, but just be determined and keep trying. And by keep, if you keep pra trying, keep practicing, gradually, gradually you become successful. So this particular time with this deadly virus going around, we're very careful. And, and we're be, our, our activities are being restricted, we're, lock, we're keeping uh, in our rooms more, we're not mixing much. It's actually good for us as devotees. It's a great opportunity to increase our Krishna consciousness. Do more hearing, do more chanting, study Prabhupada's books more carefully. Okay. Any other question? Hare Krishna. Ah, вот вопрос, что если, например, вы сказали, что четыре вида людей есть, да? Если ты относишься именно к тому типу, который вообще не годен, что делать в этом плане? Есть уже и пример есть, и наставление есть, а ты все равно не меняешься. Hare Krishna. What to do with such people? Well, we, we try to give them some mercy at least, you know. We try to, try to be merciful to them, give them some prasadam. Generally prasadam is acceptable by m many people. Oh, herself. What to do, yeah, what is to do in this, in, in this case? 
well, you have you, you you must feel yourself to be very unfortunate, and we should think how to change. We should think uh, that we're very unfortunate, and Krishna has put us in this miserable condition. We have to try to take the advantage to do service for devotees who are able to follow. If we understand that we're actually doing something wrong and we know, we know it's wrong, then we should, we should feel very guilty within our own heart. We have to regret. That feeling of regret should be there, that I'm not doing right, I'm not doing good, I should, I should change. So that, when that feeling is there, then Krishna will make arrangements for us to improve. Krishna will put us into a different situation or he will take away our sense gratification. Krishna will make some arrangement to help us to get out of that miserable condition. But, but, but there must be that feeling in our own self, we must, we must confess, we must admit that I'm not doing right, I'm not doing the proper thing. We said our own attitude is very important. So we don't want well, we don't want to continue in that miserable condition. We want to change, we want to improve ourselves. So Krishna will help us. Another question? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Спасибо большое за лекцию. Вопрос такой. Как научиться быстро переключаться из внешней деятельности во внутреннюю, когда находишься в активной деятельности, в раджасе, переходить быстро на платформу благости? И как вот это более практично можно применить в своей жизни? Такую некую золотую середину, как можно найти? Hare Krishna. Uh, how to come from the platform platform of external activities to internal activities from passion uh, to just moment of goodness how we can do it very quickly and practically how what we can do practically Well, we have to we have to cultivate the mode of goodness by proper 
activities, we have to understand what what actually is the mode of goodness, and what actually what are the, what what are the qualities, what are the actions in the mode of passion and ignorance. <coughs> Just like food, there are different qualities of food. Food in the mode of goodness, in the mode of passion, and in the mode of ignorance. We should we should partake food in the mode of goodness. Then there are, there are different uh, ways of dressing. You can dress in the mode of passion, you can dress in the mode of goodness, you can dress in the mode of ignorance. And similarly talking, words, actions, can be also the mode of passion, the mode of ignorance. We want, you have to study the 16th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. You have to hear from the Bhagavad Gita describing the qualities in these different modes. Just like I mentioned that lust, anger and greed are gates into hell. They are the beginning of demoniac life. So if you know you have the habit to be very angry and to be very greedy, we want to do something about it. We have to learn to control the mind and senses. Sometimes we get very angry and we didn't even know it. We're not even aware. Sometimes we say things which are so nasty and so painful, so nasty words, and, and we're not even aware of what we're saying. So it's important for us, first of all, to become conscious. We have to be, we have to begin to appreciate, to understand what we're doing and how we're behaving. And after becoming conscious, then we can go on to come to Krishna consciousness. So, we study the Bhagavad Gita, chapters 16, chapter 17, very helpful, describing the qualities of these, the nature of these different modes. And when we hear, then we can try to cultivate the quality of goodness. Just like in the mode of passion, in the mode of ignorance, we will speak words which are painful and nasty to others. But in the mode of goodness, we will speak words which are pleasing to others. And if we are not able to think anything to please others, then we 
пытаетесь удовлетворить других людей, то вы таким образом просто декларируете священное писание. So it's very important for us to read regularly the books. We often see devotees are not reading enough, they're not hearing enough. And, not, and it, it's not only just reading, but we want to also start to try to apply what we read. So if you read, like, like I said from Bhagavad Gita, you read again and again, chapter 16, chapter 17, or you can read also chapter 14, describing more about the modes of nature. And then try to understand where are we? Are we in goodness or passion or ignorance? If we know we are in passion and ignorance, we should do something. We can do it. We can get. We we have to do it ourselves. Don't. It's not that somebody can come along and just change you. But we have to want to change ourselves. Come to the mode of goodness. Of course, if you get association, if you're able to get some association with devotees, good devotees, then they can help you to come to the mode of goodness. But at this time, with uh, association being difficult and restricted, we have to help ourselves. We have to be our own doctor. We have to look at our own faults and try to crack them. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other question? Okay, so I want to continue studying this nectar of instruction with you every week when we read. Right. Well, we can go through it gradually. So. So you please also, if you have a copy of your own, you can also look through it and make some notes and have some questions you would like to ask and we'll try to answer. Okay, so we'll stop here. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Okay, thank you, Tadyana. Tadyana. Hare Krishna. Okay, Tadyana, thank you. Hare Krishna.